Well, praise the Lord. So good to be in his presence today. And we just want to welcome our Facebook live stream audience. And those of you later that are going to be watching by, that are watching by YouTube, God bless you. So good to have you in the house. Thank God the anointing of God is transferable. And so therefore, wherever you are, those in this room, those that are watching by whatever room you're in, whatever house you're in, the anointing of God is transferable. And God is bigger than any problem that we may face. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We serve a mighty God. We serve a mighty, mighty, mighty God. I tell you what, I'm excited for 2017. I said, I'm excited for 2017. Anybody else? <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, let's begin. I want to open with a scripture, 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 3, it says, His divine power has given to us all things, say all things. All things. All things. His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you that it is alive and sharp as an intuitive sword. I thank you that you watch over your word to perform it, and that it will not return forth void, but it will accomplish that which you've sent it to do in the name of Jesus, and we give you glory and praise for it. Amen. Hallelujah. His divine power. I love the way the Bible says it talks about not just power it is his power but i love the way the holy spirit wrote in the word divine his power is different from any other power his power is limitless it is by the power of god that jesus spoke the worlds into existence it's by the power of god that Moses touched the sea with a stick and it parted. It's by the power of God, hallelujah, that water came over the rock. By the power of God that the walls of Jericho fell. By the power of God that Jesus went about healing all that were sick and casting out devils from all that were oppressed. By the power of God It was by the power of God that the, that, that the early church received the baptism of the Holy Spirit and were endued with not just any power, but divine power. It was by the power of God that, that the shadow of believers began, would fall on sick people. And even as their shadow fell on people, they would recover and get up. By the power of God, a murderer by the name of Saul was transformed into one of the greatest Christian leaders known as Paul, writing most of the New Testament by the power of God. Hallelujah. And it's by the power of God that so many miracles were recorded through the book of Acts. And, and through the epistles and by the power of God, the church went from addition to multiplication and every nation was reached by the power of God. One, one awakening after another hit by the power of God in, in the early 1800s, around the 1830s. A great, great revival was birthed in Hawaii. Jesus. Right in Hilo. And, and revival broke out. And people began to pray. And people began to cry out to God. And, and this, the city of Hilo grew 
by 10 times because of the revival that hit. And the revival spread throughout the big island and went to every island to the place where 97 or 98 percent of the people in the Hawaiian Islands were born again, filled with the Spirit, shaken by the power of God, healings, signs and wonders, miracles were commonplace, schools were full of people praying. I mean, the whole place was shaken by the power of God. Now, people came in and said, well, what, what happened? People tr came in trying to take credit and try to organize and say, well, we're, we're the Methodists, or we're the Catholics, or we're the Baptists, or we're the whatever. And everybody, and I'll tell you, because there was giving that broke out, people gave. I mean, they gave everything. So there was a huge, um, people just, when God touches your life, you become a giver. And so all of a sudden, you had all this finance that came in. With all the finance, people came in and tried to control it. And the control of man will always kill revival. But it hasn't been killed. <laughs> the flames have gone down and, and, and now it's burning embers. Burning embers. And just as the Holy Spirit blows on it, I mean, you take an ember that's glowing. Sometimes it has to be dark for you to see an ember that's glowing. But just... Uh, uh, a breeze can hit it and all of a sudden the flame pops up again. Hallelujah. And there's a lot of fresh wood that has fallen on old burning embers. So when this flame shoots up, it's going to be a mighty fire. And it's not going to be contained in the islands. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I tell you, do this sometime. Just, just test it and see. You can go anywhere to the islands. And talk to people that have got, I mean, that have been in the islands, their family have been in the island for several generations. Whether, I mean, Hawaiian, ethnic Hawaiian people or people just generations that have been in the islands for a couple of hundred years, their families. And you go up to them, they can be uh, uh, the biggest heathen. They can be, I mean, total atheists. They can be totally, it doesn't matter. And just you just go talk to them, and as soon as you talk to them, and as you talk to them, just and, and you just release the anointing of the Lord, there'll be an instant connection. I've spoken to people in shopping malls, and I just connect and just start. I just by the Holy Spirit just say, you know what? I see the hand of God on you. God has got a plan and a purpose for your life. Their eyes fill up with tears and all of a sudden, it, that's an ember that just got breathed on. And these islands are full of embers. Hallelujah. And, and so when this great awakening happens, it's not going to be like the last one. It's going to be a rekindling. Yes. It's going to be a rekindling. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we are actually going to, we're going to be building on another man's foundation in a sense. It, it, it's something as in through the early revival, it's already been laid and there's going to be a great springing forth. And in revival times, there are times of blessing. I tell you what, every which way your family is blessed, uh, your marriage is blessed, uh, your business is blessed, everything is blessed in revival times. And I really believe that. You might say, what is your, as South African, South Africa is on the other side of the world. I'm, in, I'm at the far corners of the earth right now. You dig a hole from here straight down, you get to where I was raised. And say, so, well, what, what are you doing in a way? The Lord called me here, sent me here. Not to come and plant one more church. This, last time I looked at over a thousand churches on the island. Not to plant one more church. Not to be culturally relevant or irrelevant. But brought me here just and sent me here. And the Lord just said, I'm sending you as a catalyst for revival and for an awakening. Hallelujah. So I'm, I'm a missionary right here. 
contending. My wife and I, my family, all of us, contending, praying, believing. We left everything. And, but, but this is, I'm telling you right now, I, I believe it. The Lord has shown me. When I said, Lord, why? You know, send me somewhere where they haven't got churches. And I felt like the Lord said, no, I'm sending you to Hawaii. This is where East meets West. Everybody lives in Hawaii. Every nation is in Hawaii. And from, from a child, the Lord spoke to me about the Bible. And spoke to me about being a catalyst for a great awakening and revival. And, and so... It's just like my friends and different people like, what, what are you going to the islands for? You can go vacation there if you want to. And I'm like, no, it's not, about, it's not about the beauty. It's not about the waterfalls. It's not about any of that. Something, I, something is coming. And, and, and God has, by His grace, selected us as a family to be a part of this. And that's what we're doing. We've got nothing to prove, nothing to gain, nothing to lose. We're here to preach the word uncompromised. Amen. Hallelujah. Some people said, I've been told what well, you need to you need to learn, you know, culturally study the culture and learn how to speak pigeon and and I, that's great. I would do it in a heartbeat. I love the culture. But you know what? Something happened. And I offended the person when I said it. I probably could have said it in a different way. Because they were really trying to help me. I said, God didn't send me here to become like you. He didn't send me here to be a Hawaiian. If he wanted a Hawaiian, he's got millions of them right here. I mean, well, at least a million. <laughs> and he's using them already. In a mighty way. Thank God for local people that are stepping out and doing mighty exploits for God. Thank God for it. But He didn't bring me from Africa to become local in that sense. He brought me here to bring a unique perspective and a unique experience with the Lord in a unique way. And you see, God didn't call any of you to be somebody else. That's right. He called you to be you. That's right. Right. Now, trans be transformed into His glory, being more like Jesus, but you are, you are a reflector of Jesus. But you reflect Him in a unique way. And every one of us should find out who God made us to be and then be that. And it may not be popular at all times. It may, the person that you are might make you very unpopular. But it's not a popularity contest. When somebody dies and they need somebody to be raised from the dead, if you, if you have the anointing to raise somebody from the dead, even if they don't like you, they will find you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> And, and people that want a, just a social church, if they need company, they know where to find that church. But if they need a miracle, they know where to find a place where miracles happen. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. And so, thank God for everybody. My grandfather planted many churches and, and he, said, he said, every light will, will attract its own bugs. He says, so just shine. And that's the word. That's one of the words that I have for you. Just shine. Shine for Jesus. And, and people will bug you all day long. <laughs> to come and get more of Jesus. From the way that you shine it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Well, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. I might get to my message here today. His divine power has given us all things pertaining to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. Yes. Now family, we need to, as born again believers, we need to learn how to operate, 
how to live and walk and have our being according to His divine power. And, and we need to ask the Holy Spirit because it's His divine power, the Bible says, has given us all things for life and for godliness. In other words, life includes <clears throat> your marriage, your family, your your, your work, everyday life, godliness includes your calling, your ministry. And, and so therefore, His divine power has given you everything. Or another way of saying is, everything is accessible through His divine power. Now if I had to say, how many of you have a need, would you raise your hand? Everybody raise their hand. And don't be ashamed to do that. He will provide all of your needs according to His riches, which are where? In glory. And it's by His divine power, through Christ. So whatever, it, if it's healing, if it's provision, if it's deliverance from something, if it's a problem that needs solved, if it's direction, whatever that it is that you need, it's accessible through His divine power. Now, God made us, we're fearfully and wonderfully made as human beings. And we have tremendous potential. And, and people, I mean, they've figured out how to go to the moon and how to put, you know, send a rocket to Mars and go to, and the great things that people have invented. People are phenomenal and very, very wise. But having said that, when it comes to the real issues of life, when it comes to the real things, there are some things that God has made by design that we cannot solve in our own strength. You can have all the money in the world, but there's a lot that money cannot buy. That's right. you, can have, you can have so many things in this life But even though you are, you might be a genius and you may have money and you may have everything in the natural talent, there are still going to be major bridges in your life that you're not able to cross. Go speak to the people that, 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 that are supposedly have it all. People that go out and rent a yacht and drop 20 million dollars over a weekend like a small change and then find out why they're dealing with suicidal thoughts because there are things that fame and money and talent and that it just cannot it cannot meet that need and I it's by design God put that emptiness inside of us so that we could so that we would need him and everybody needs the Lord and I'm saying to tell you right now the most important things in life I mean they have already been freely given through Christ Jesus but they're accessed by his divine power so the real things that God calls you to do you cannot do that's one of the ways you know it's God. Amen. If you can figure it out and if you can do it, then, you know, wonderful, you can do that thing. But it's not God's true call. God's true call is something you cannot do and something you cannot accomplish. It has to be done supernaturally. It has to be done by His grace and by His divine power. Hallelujah. And, and supernaturally, Two people that would be that would never get along can have a marriage made in heaven. Supernaturally. Even though for generations maybe children have been rebellious. Supernaturally, you can raise a family without any rebellion. Supernaturally. 
I mean, there's so many th things that you cannot do in the natural. By His divine power. But we have to learn to operate in this divine power. Can you say amen? Amen. We have to learn by the Holy Spirit how to access and then how to release. How to access and how to release His power into our actions. Accessing and releasing. It's already been given to us. But we've got to walk in it. Hallelujah. Now, in the scripture, it's interesting. It says again, it's 2 Peter 1 verse 3. His divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of Him who called us by glory and virtue. His divine power is access, is only accessed through the knowledge of Him. It's only accessed through a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. It's not something that, that there's seven steps to. It's not something that you can just read a book and have. You can come and we can call a prayer line and lay hands on people and His divine power will come on you and it will transform you and it will bless you. But we're not talking about a touch here. We're talking about a change. You can go to very many anointed ministries and anointed men or women of God and, and or even through the television and there's an anointing or even right now as, as I'm speaking, people are watching from different parts of the world. There's an anointing going on. And, and you can be impacted and touched and even changed by that anointing. But as, as believers, spiritual believers, we've been to conventions. We've gone to prophetic conventions and received prophecies and healing conventions and received healing. And I mean just different and received so many wonderful things. But here's the thing. How many of you have been to the convention, received a wonderful thing, and then when the speaker leaves town, when the meetings are over, then you've got to face that bridge that you could not cross before. before. You've got to face it again. You've got to face your bills again. You've got to face your family. You've got to face your marriage. You got to, I mean, people get healed, and then all of a sudden... The devil puts a sickness back on them. And it's like, well, I thought I was healed. Well, you were. But it's not about just getting healed. It's learning how to walk in divine health. Not just getting, I mean, well, what if I, I need a financial breakthrough. Well, listen, you can win the lottery and you can, you can be on food stamps in two years from there. Because it's not about just a, a, a one-time cash flow or a one-time healing or one-time blessing. Well, if only I got a word. Well, that word will only take you so far. And the Lord wants us to walk in victory and live in the blessings of the Lord. And, and, and He has freely given us all things. All things. For our calling. For our ministry. For us to walk from victory to victory, for every battle to become a victory and for every test to become a testimony. So that we don't have to run. I mean, it's wonderful. Next time you go to a convention, go there and receive from it, but don't, don't make it your lifeline like you're depending on that person that came to town. Jesus has already come to town. <laughs> He already lives on the inside of you. And He's already freely given you all things. Hallelujah. And so therefore, the Lord wants us to walk in victory. Family wants me to walk in victory. He wants you to walk in victory. Depression free, anxiety free, stress free. Hallelujah. Where we see, where we see problems as opportunities. For God to break through. 
Hallelujah. But it, it's, it's, His divine power is only accessed through personal relationship. That's right. if, if you do studies and you look at surveys, the average Christian spends very, very little time, if any, in prayer. Usually emergency prayers like, help God. Help! <laughs> it's like if they get a bad report, then they become prayer warriors for until the bad report goes away. I mean, just <laughs> little things, emergency prayers, or, or a little bit of time in the Word. It's like, maybe the New Year's resolution to spend time in the Word, and, and by this time of the year, it's already not happening anymore. And so people come to church... Uh, I love the song that we were singing. I don't want to talk about you like you're not in the room. That's what people are doing. They're just singing songs, upbeat songs, clapping their hands, lifting their hands, and it's all about the song. Going through the motions, praying prayers, memorized prayers, doing different things, listening to messages that are, you know, tell you how success in life, using the Bible as a success manual. Going through all these things, I'm not. It's it's not about knocking anything, but the fact is that people have can so easily become religious, yeah. where where they're involved in a religion and they're involved in a form of godliness without the power. Yeah. That's what the Bible says it will happen in the last days. And in fact, and many of the people that that are involved with things that are a form of godliness without the power, write books and preach and come against anything where the power of God is there. And so you have people that not only don't have a relationship with Jesus, really they don't experience the power of God in their life and they're a, a little bit afraid of the power of God. And yet, God is a powerful God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. But it's all about that relationship with Jesus. I mean, while we're spending time, taking the time, to spend time in His Word, Amen. to spend time in prayer, to, to, to spend time worshipping Him, Amen. And, and not just... In, in the, the devotional time, but it, I really believe that, that you start something in a devotional time and then you carry it out after the devotional time. Yeah. I had somebody that said to me, well, how often does God speak to you? <laughs> I was like, I don't want to sound hyper-spiritual here, but all the time. <laughs> and I speak to him and he speaks to me. Well, how do you know God speaking. Well, I, I know His voice. Well, how do you know His voice? Well, I've spent tens of thousands of hours at the throne, worshipping. I know His voice. And a voice of a stranger I'll not follow. And people are like, well, God doesn't speak to me. Well, it, it's not because He's a respecter of persons, but as 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 you go in, and, and there's going to be spiritual resistance to this, folks. But as you go in and you make the time to know Jesus. Now His grace will be on you and He'll teach you how to do it. As you make the time. I mean, and in my, I really believe that if we have to sleep less. Well, I'm so busy, I don't have time. Well, I mean, if I, I don't know how many of you are busy between 3 and 4 in the morning, but <laughs> some of you might be, but I'm just saying, many of you are not. Come speak to me, I'll find a, a time slot in your busy schedule where you're not that busy. <laughs> That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and so therefore, we can make that time, but then it's, it, it, it flows over continually throughout the day. But it's not just praying, and it's not just worshipping, and it's not just uh, uh, reading the Word.
But it is as we pray and we worship and we read the word and we talk to Jesus, accessing his divine power while we do that. In other words, as we read a scripture, we're receiving in the name of Jesus. I read the scripture, but I'm not just reading the scripture. I'm accessing. I'm receiving. Amen. From his divine power. Jesus went and he was walking at a real famous story and people were crowding in around him because miracles were happening all the place and he was walking along and as he's walking everybody's just like tugging on him and tapping him on the shoulder and trying to get his attention I mean just the most powerful man that ever walked on the planet creator of heaven and earth the anointing that was around him people pressing in their life depended upon him. Stories going out about the pool of Bethesda and the blind man's eyes opened and leprosy leaving people. And people are so excited. And as he's walking with this crowd around him, all of a sudden he stops. And he says, who touched me? Yeah. And they're like, Lord, everybody's touching you. He said, no, somebody touched me differently. The Bible says, for he perceived that virtue went out of him. Somebody snuck up and made a withdrawal. That's right. Amen. Everybody was touching him, but not everybody was making a withdrawal. That's right. But there was a lady that wasn't meant to be there that was rendered unclean <laughs> by her condition and that, that, that broke the law. By coming out in public and risk being put to death and crawl through hoping that she could just, I'm just going to touch the hem of his garment. <laughs> and as she stretched out and here she touches it, oh thank you, I just received, whew, and the healing went into her. And as she, I'll come and sneak away and here the master says, who touched me? And she's like, like the kid with a hand in the cookie jar. <laughs> What do I say now? Who touched me? Well, maybe I can get away, everybody. No, no. Somebody touched me differently. You know how many believers, it, I mean, most, many believers don't spend much time in the Word, don't spend much time in prayer, don't spend much time worshiping, but do you know how many believers that do spend time are like the crowds pressing in around Jesus, touching Him, but never making a withdrawal? In other words, I'm familiar, I'm getting into the Word, I'm studying the doctrine, I'm, I'm putting the alarm clock out, I'm going to pray in the Spirit, and I'm going to pray the prayer of faith, and then I'm going to pray that prayer, and then I'm going to take time, and I'm going to worship, uh, and then and, and I'm going to go through all this, and have this devotion, and I'm going to become familiar with Jesus, and we talk to Him all day, and if I, you know, whatever I need, I'm going to mention my needs to Him, and I've got a prayer list, and... I've got, yeah, yes, I've prayed for all those people and I'm going to put something on Facebook that will witness the people and do all those things. And, and they're very, very active. All around Jesus. And they're saved. And they're going to heaven. But their life is so hard. And it doesn't have to be because his yoke is easy and his burden is light. Right. And the reason why our lives are hard, family, is because we're around Jesus. We're right. familiar with him, but we're not like the woman with the issue of blood. We're not making a withdrawal. We have that relationship which qualifies us, but it's not just the relationship. It's, it's by faith, by Amen. grace. Through faith, receiving. Lord, I receive. So I'm making withdrawal. Amen. Your spirit being accessing. And Lord, if you if you've freely given me all things, then I touch you right now. Yeah. And in Jesus' name, I receive healing. In Jesus' name, I receive deliverance. In Jesus' name, I receive provision right now. I receive your anointing right now. I make it withdrawal right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. 
Now people ask the question, how come when you call a prayer line and you pray for people, healing prayer line, Jesus, Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Well, how come, okay, we know that 20 people came forward and 10 people instantly were healed. Jump up and down, shout, blind eyes open, deaf ears open, phenomenal miracles. But what about the 10 that weren't healed? Does Jesus not love them? It's the same anointing. Sometimes I'll pray for people and the anointing on the one that didn't get healed is stronger. I'm like, Lord, I can't judge whether you healed somebody based on the amount of anointing. Because I pray for somebody, it's a stronger anointing. Sometimes the anointing is so strong that it knocks them down under the power of God. And they shake under the anointing and tremble and the anointing of God so powerful you think, well, surely that one might be healed. And then you pray for somebody else and it feels like there's not, there's maybe a little trickle and you don't really see much. Just in the name of Jesus, move on. Afterwards they come back, by the way, Pastor, after you prayed, the pain left, I'm fine. <laughs> I didn't really see that big of a deal when I prayed for you. Well, it's not about how high they jump or how loud they shout. Amen. See, what, all I felt was a trickle. Well, it doesn't even take a trickle of God's anointing. I mean, just one drop. So I didn't feel much. Well, did you get a drop? Well, all I got is a drop. And that's enough. It's enough to keep you healthy, whole, prosperous, blessed for the rest of your life and your children. One drop. Some other people receive a whole river. Well, a whole river goes and runs all over them. But their cup is upside down. You have a cup that's upside down. God can pour all he wants. How much are you going to have when you walk away? Well, you have a wet cup, but that's about it. So a lot of times what's happening is people are touched by the power of God, but they're not, they're not receiving and many times maybe they haven't been taught to receive or how to receive. How do I receive? <laughs> and there's many ways to receive, but, but it, it starts with just the heart of faith by grace through faith. Amen. Where you believe that you receive. That's right. That woman with the issue of blood didn't go through seminary and five years of seminary or whatever to learn how to receive. She had a need. She knew Jesus was the healer. And, and she just she made up her mind, I'm going to touch him. And when I touch him, I'm taking something that he has for me. And when I take that, it's going to change my whole life. That's right. And so by, I mean, by faith, she went against everything and laid hold of something. His divine power has freely given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. But we have to stir ourselves up and go to Jesus and uh, through the knowledge of Him reach out like the woman did and press in differently and make a withdrawal for ourselves. And when we do... The divine power of God will come on the inside of you. Like I said, it could be a drop, it could be a trickle, or it could be a river. But if even just a drop comes on the inside of you, one drop of the divine power of God is enough to turn your life right side up. It's enough to bless you in every kind of blessing. Just one drop. Hallelujah. But as we have a relationship with Jesus, family, reach out and take some of Jesus. Take some of His power. Take some of His virtue. Lay a hold of it. Drink it in. Jesus said, 
Whoever is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. And those that drink will never thirst again. All their needs will be met. And what's more, out of their innermost being will flow rivers of living water. So, I mean, the little bit that you drink, the drop that you get will turn into rivers. And everybody around you will be blessed because you were blessed. You first receive and then you're able to give. Hallelujah. After you have received. But we have to learn to... to Throughout the day, throughout the day, Lord, I receive virtue. I receive your power. I receive your, your divine power. Lord, I'll take another drink of that. Lord, I'll take another drink of that. Thank you very much. I receive more in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. When I lift my hands up and praise you, I just receive, I just receive some of your divine power. I come to you, Jesus, and I drink. I drink. I drink, I receive. As I read your word, I don't just read it as doctrine. I'm, 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 I'm touching it. I'm making a withdrawal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Just lift up your hands just for a minute right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, just right now, even those of you watching by, by way of Facebook, lift up your hands and just right now, just, just say, I receive. I receive. I just receive virtue right now. Receive His power right now. Receive His glory right now. Thank, touch the hem of His garments right now. In the realm of the Spirit. In the realm. That's right. Just touch the hem of His garment and just receive some of Him right now. In the name of Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I receive right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I receive ability. I receive healing. I really I receive provision. In the name of Jesus. I press in. I press in. You are a miracle working God. Your divine power. Is here right now, and I access it in Jesus' name. I access it in Jesus' name. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Now, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20 in the Amplified Bible says this Now to Him. By or in consequence of the action of His power that is at work within us. His power that is at work within us is able to carry out His purpose and do super abundantly far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond the highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes or dreams. Hallelujah. By His power that is at work within us. His divine power wants to do a work within you, within me. And as His divine power begins to work on the inside of us, the Bible says that we will do super abundantly more. <laughs> Super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare ask or think infinitely beyond our prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. In other words, the things that God is about to do, I mean, you haven't even prayed about. It's beyond your ability to dream about. It's beyond your ability to even come up and scheme. I mean, it's, it's super abundantly, far above 
by His power, not that works within the minister, not by His power that works within the evangelist, comes through the television, but that works within you. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of Jesus, just begin to stir up the gift that is inside of you right now, in the name of Jesus. Shakabrimi shakamala. In the name of Jesus, we stir up the gift, Lord, we drink of your living water. Hallelujah. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We receive all that we need for life and godliness. We access your power by faith. And now we step out in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. We glorify your name. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Those of you who join us by live stream, thank you for joining us. God bless you. We love you. Have a blessed week in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.